Over the past few episodes, it has emerged that running an airline is no easy task, more so for East African airlines keen on marching up to international standards. So just how does an airline remain profitable? The major trends in this market include increasing flight frequencies to high potential routes, venturing into new markets, hedging of fuel to mitigate against adverse effects of sudden increases in oil price on their returns, fleet management and creating alliances with other international airlines and competition seems to have played a major role. If you look at what has happened in Mombasa, we used to do Mombasa three, four flights a day. We've woken up and we're doing ten a day and we're making money. The challenge, though, is on sustainability, where East African countries, with the exception of Kenya, have for long struggled to maintain a national carrier. Flying the Ugandan banner has been the most challenging, with most of the country's carriers not lasting more than three years. So we're very proud of our achievement. Um, currently, we have four aircraft in our fleet. There is a very strong government will and determination, and at the same time, our own determination through our team, through our staff that we have and with management to make this airline an important player in the region. Infrastructure still remains a challenge, one that all airlines across the region have to deal with. Invest in the infrastructure on, 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 on the airline industry because tourism is dependent on the airline, airline industry and tourism is the highest growth area in the world. The Kenya Airports Authority agrees that more needs to be done to uplift the standards of the Jomo Kenyatta International Airport, which was built to handle 2.5 million passengers, but now handles in excess of 6 million. What we'd like to, we'd, we'd be, we'd like to manage all of them, and, uh, but of course, again, our mandate is we have to run them on a commercial basis. But it's very encouraging that the government has realized uh, our capability to maintain them, and uh, we believe in the new political dispensation, with basically the new constitution. But even with these challenges, rapid regional integration, which has created a market of 120 million people, presents a great opportunity. The cake is big and it's going to grow. And the thing is, as we compete, we are growing the cake. You should not worry about competition. We just carry on competing. And member states are keen to embrace the concept of open skies as the common market protocol takes shape. We think airlines should be given the chance of competing within what they call the common market area. And if the East African community really is standing for uh, liberalization, why don't they open the skies? To liberalize the, um, uh, the, uh, the sky, I think that it, it's something that is on the table. Uh, I do believe that the more partnership that we'll develop within the East African community when it comes to our airlines, the better it will be for the community. Now, if you have kept with us throughout this series of Touchdown East Africa, you'll realize that the East African airline space is an exciting place to watch with the younger airlines keen on taking on the more established airlines in a market that has immense potential. The airlines say they have only scratched the surface and the best is yet to come. I am Terry Anchebet. Thanks for watching Touchdown East Africa and I'm signing off from the Pearl of Africa in Entebbe, Uganda.